This is going to be an eye-opening understanding of the book of Revelation. Revelations chapter 1, verse 1, says that Revelation is a book of prophecy. Common mistakes done on the book of Revelation that you would notice by the other preachers. Preterism. Prophecies in Revelation have already been fulfilled in the first century. Allegorical. That everything is metaphorical, but not meant to happen. The problem is that this can be interpreted in so many different ways. Post-tribulation. They believe the rapture is after the tribulation. Revelation 4 is a proof that the church is up in heaven in a pre-tribulation rapture. Post-millennial. They believe that we are now living in the millennium and we can bring the kingdom in. We are definitely not living in the millennium. Amillennial. They believe that there's a millennium, a thousand years of Jesus Christ reigning in heaven or earth. Dispensationalism. I'm going to show you how you can take the word of God literally as it says. We need to have double application when it comes to prophecies. For example, in the book of Psalm, it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? This verse refers to King David, who was talking about his sin. But as we know, Jesus also uttered the same words at the cross later on. Double application means that it could have happened in the past and also happen again in the future. Revelation 1 is an introduction. First, the seven churches are introduced. Then it also introduces the Lord Jesus Christ in verses 5 to 20, that he is fearsome, awesome, and majestic. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Revelation 1 helps us understand that the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. The seven candlesticks represent the seven churches. Revelation 2 to 3 are the most applicable chapters to the Christians in this age and also contains tribulation doctrine. Ephesus, they are first century saints. Smyrna, a time of great persecution of the Christians. Pergamus, pagan Rome combined with Christianity under Roman Catholicism. Thyatira, great spiritual darkness, tremendous persecution. Sardis, Continued in spiritual darkness, Reformation exposed the errors of Catholicism, but very little evangelism, where Calvinism was born, and people sat down studying books. Philadelphia, Age of Great Revivals. Laodicea, Modern Century Today, It's Not Dead, It's Not On Fire, It's Lukewarm. They love Jesus, but their practices are worldly, and doctrines are wrong. Revelation 4 to 5 are about the church being raptured up to heaven. Pre tribulation rapture and pre millennial, Christ is going to come down and set up his kingdom after the tribulation. For reasons why, watch the other videos in this channel. Revelation 6 to 19 are about tribulation. Tribulation refers to a seven year period where the wrath of God is going to pour it out on all mankind, and the Antichrist will unite all world's nations and religions under his system. Revelation 6 talks about the seven seals, death, famine, antichrist, world war three, nations turn against each other, the saints being persecuted, chaos in the heavens right before Jesus Christ comes back to reign. The seventh seal is opened up in chapter eight. Within the seventh seal, there are seven trumpets. The seven trumpets match with the seals, so they happen contemporarily. They are not chronologically following after the six seals. The seven trumpets, which are judgments, are Hail and fire mingled with blood. Water turned to blood. A great star fell from heaven and poisoned the water. The heavenly lights are disrupted. Mutants coming out of hell to torment people. Death. Chapter 7 talks about the good guys, Jews and Gentiles who are tribulation saints. They are 144,000 virgin male Jews. The whole nation of Israel will experience salvation because the Bible prophesied about it. Chapter 11 talks about two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, who will preach repentance and salvation to the Israelites. There will also be an appearance of a hero, or Jesus. Chapter 12 is going to consist of Israel's persecution and running away. 
similar to Daniel 9 and Matthew 24. The Antichrist, who initially signs a treaty with Israel, now betrays the Jewish nation and persecutes them. Chapter 13 is about the Antichrist. His birthplace is mentioned in Daniel 11, verse 1, which is Mediterranean area, and he will be a Syrian Jew. His religious affiliation is Roman Catholicism. He will speak in English, which is represented by the mouth of a lion. His feet is bare, which means it moves like a socialist country, and his main connection is leopard, the United States of America. The seven-headed dragon and ten-horned antichrist, these animal parts match with these nations. Chapter 13, verses 16 to 18, Mark of the Beast. A leopard spot is like a kiss. It could be a barcode, a microchip. Which religion puts a spot, mark, on your forehead? This is universal in Roman Catholicism and in Eastern religions. Chapter 14. The 144,000 is raptured up to heaven, which is a post-tribulation rapture for tribulation saints. God gives a warning to the earth that the end is coming. Chapter 16. God sends down His judgment. Chapter 17 to 18 talk about the great horror who has a history of creating martyrs. The conspiracy theorists would give that the elites, like the Illuminati or Masons, have their mother as Roman Catholicism or Jesuit. It is not difficult to connect the symbolisms here to the Roman Catholic religion. Chapter 19 talks about marriage supper of the Lamb and the Armageddon. Here are the characters. Old Testament saints, John the Baptist, etc., who are friends of the bridegroom. Church-age saints, the Bride of Jesus, Tribulation Saints, the Bridesmaids, and the Husband, Jesus Christ. We will all have a honeymoon of a thousand years, the millennium, when we go down in Armageddon to wipe out this world. Chapter 20. Satan is bound for a thousand years. Verses 1 to 6 talk about 1,000 years of honeymoon and the millennium. Then Satan gets loosed, gathers the world to fight against Jesus Christ and another world war happens. Chapter 21 is about the Great White Throne Judgment. This is where all your lost, loved family members and friends would appear. God proves they are sinful and that they would be cast into hell. This is a truth that no one likes hearing, but God is a holy God and He has put up with our sin and given grace for us to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to see you get saved in Jesus Christ today. Chapters 20 to 22 talk about the new heaven and new earth, which are also written in the books of Isaiah and Jeremiah. We're going to populate and spread out and rule the entire universe. Do not spend your time building riches on this earth. It's too small in comparison with the universe that you are inheriting. John is amazed at all these things that he's seeing. Let the end begin, so that we can all live happily ever after. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus.